everybody, my name is Rihanna and today I just wanted to talk about how I personally care for my Dubia roaches. I'm sure everyone does some things differently. I'm not saying my way is the right way or the only way to do it. I'm just going to show you guys what I've done the past couple years um, that has given me a lot of success in having grown a really large colony. So without further ado, let's just get on into the video and I'll show you guys what my setup is looking like and just what I do to keep them alive and making babies. <laughs> so a little side note here, I know those of you who have subscribed to me probably subscribed for my dreadlock videos and videos about my hair, so I'm sorry that this is kind of super different from the videos that you probably were hoping to subscribe to, but I just wanted to make a video about this because it's one of my hobbies. So just apologizing to those of you who don't want to see bugs right now because you're about to see them. So I keep them under this blanket because my roommates hate them. So hopefully you all can kind of see that. So here I have uh, my roach tank. It is a 10 gallon glass aquarium with a screen lid on top. Um, sometimes they climb on top so I gotta make sure none are hiding up there. So I got them from dubiaroaches.com. I started with I think around 20 of them, um, a couple males, a bunch of females, and they have just reproduced like crazy. So, oh, there's a male right there actually. Bring him down so you guys can see him. That is a male because he has wings. He's a little dusty from the food that I just fed them a little bit ago. So I have about half to three quarters of the tank filled with these egg cartons. Uh, there's a couple toilet paper rolls down here, just I don't really know why, I don't really need them. Um, but it makes it easy for them to crawl up and down them and hide in them and just gives them a lot of space to move around because there are a lot in here. I'm guessing there's at least a couple hundred in here. I have the their living quarters, you could say, on this side where they breed and where it's dark. They like it dark, that's why I have them under a blanket. Um, and then over here, I have two little dishes, one I fill with their water gel things, and one I sometimes fill with food. It's got some old kale on it right now, um, and I'll give you guys a better look so you can see the two dishes. So I feed them this. This is roach chow from dubiaroaches.com. I am not entirely sure what's in it. I remember reading the ingredients before and thinking that it sounded pretty good. I just really didn't want to feed them dog food and I know some people do that and that's fine. Um, and I hear it works pretty well, but just for me personally, I didn't feel like putting dog food into my bearded dragon. So I feed them this chow and I give it to them kind of when it runs out. There's still some powder, you can kind of see some in here. Um, so they haven't eaten it all yet, so I give them about a week or sometimes two. I know they've gone probably like a month without eating before because I'm a terrible roach owner apparently, but they were fine. These are the crystals that soak up the water so they can drink the water. Um, I just buy a pouch of these from the same place, dubiaroaches.com, and uh, you just put a handful in to a small container or jar and fill it with water and they soak up the water. They get about that big and... I uh, just put them in one of those little lids so they don't leak everywhere and they drink them. So that's what I do for food and water. Also, uh, you saw some kale in there. Sometimes I'll just throw some fruits or veggies that I don't feel like composting or whatever um, in there. They've had mango, carrots, apples, uh, things like that that they really like. And they've just bred like crazy. I mean, I have some that are... Some that are this size, if it'll focus, just little tiny babies. And I have some that are about two inches in length. Um, pretty much, they've just exploded in population. Um, I've had them for a couple years. I've downsized a lot. I've given a lot away and sold a lot of them just because there's way too many. And all I feed them to is my bearded dragon and sometimes my rats. For me to get them breeding, I have two heat pads. So I have one. Right here, it's just a zoom in. It's a really small one compared to the size of my hand. It's the, one of their really small ones. And then I also have one underneath here. And I kept them both on one side of the tank so all the heat kind of stays in this area. And they, as you can see, they 
are hanging out over here, but I don't know why because they've been off. And the reason why I have them off is because they were just breeding so much and there were just too many of them and I couldn't, I mean, I didn't want to take care of that many of them if they were just going to keep breeding and breeding and breeding and I wasn't getting a lot of luck in selling them. I live in a small town, so maybe I'll try and sell them again. But um, yeah, so I turned off the heat hoping that they would stop breeding and honestly, I don't know if they have because I still see a bunch of little babies everywhere so they could just be babies from before but let's see I'll try and show you guys some of my, my big guys as you can see this one's a pretty large one probably about an inch and a half in length so yeah I mean that's pretty much it I just started out with some males and some females I didn't feed them I uh, to my bearded dragon in the very beginning I wanted to let them breed. It actually takes them kind of a long time to breed. They live pretty long um, and their babies take a long time to like hatch and get big and stuff. So I held off on feeding her from this colony um, until they really got going and breeding a lot. And then now I can't feed them fast enough because they're just way freaking too many. But hopefully that kind of shows my little setup. Uh, it's really easy, and if I can do it, I feel like anyone can do it. I think that's about it. So this is Mancho, my bearded dragon. She is full grown. I've had her for probably about five or six years now, maybe. So I'm going to feed her this nice big roach, so you guys can see. Yummy. You want more? And I'm going to feed my ratties one of these littler ones because they tend to not eat them very fast. And then they end up crawling all around the cage. Here you want? <laughs> Bit its head off. Here, you want the rest? There you go. Oh, yummy. Little carnivores. Is that good? You want another one? Just give me more. Give me more. Oh, there you go. Please eat it. Go help him eat it. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Uh, leave a comment if you think that I forgot anything or left anything out or if you just have any questions you want me to answer. And also feel free to subscribe if you're interested in these types of videos. I plan on doing a video on how I care for my bearded dragon, Moncho, and how I care for my rats. And hopefully I get some more pets in the future, but we'll see. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope your colony makes a lot of babies and you feed a lot of hungry animals with them. And uh, I hope this video was helpful. See you next time. You want more? Yeah, you could eat like 10 of those, huh?